Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Now in today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at another laptop acquisition of mine. I recently picked up this IBM ThinkPad R50e from a local thrift store here in my area. And what we're gonna be doing today is kind of going through this laptop. I'm gonna be showing you guys some of the actual unique things that might make this laptop different from some other IBM ThinkPads that you guys have seen before. And you can probably tell from the title, the main difference is that this laptop actually comes from Singapore. If I go ahead and open up this laptop right here, you might be able to notice that on the keys, uh, it's while it is still a, a standard QWERTY layout, you can see that there are some extra symbols on the keys here, which is definitely something that you would not see on a, a QWERTY keyboard here in the United States. Uh, so it's definitely pretty cool. And uh, to kind of verify like the way that I was actually able to tell this thing is from Singapore, is if you flip this thing over, on the back side, there is actually this uh, sticker here that you can see says Windows XP Home Edition from Lenovo, Singapore. So this laptop, from what I understand and to the best of my knowledge, uh, was actually sold in Singapore. So this was back from the time when uh, Lenovo had just acquired the uh, ThinkPad name from IBM and was allowed to still use the IBM name on these computers. So this is branded as an IBM ThinkPad, but it was actually manufactured by Lenovo. So like I said, in this video, we're gonna be taking a br uh, brief look at this laptop, both kind of the hardware, you know, what ports that it came with, uh, and also we're going to be attempting at least to boot this thing up and see what operating system is on it, if there is any. This did have a Windows XP sticker on the inside here, if I go ahead and open this up. There is a place right here, it's definitely worn off, but you can see that that was a spot for a Windows XP sticker. Um, but this laptop actually did not come with a power charger. Uh, I, I do have a couple of universal uh, power adapters for laptops that I'm going to be seeing if they will work with this. Uh, but I have actually not powered this thing on before, so it's going to be a total surprise to me if it works or if it just fails to turn on. Um, but before we get to that, let me actually show you some of the ports that uh, this laptop offers. So on the left side here, you have your uh, two USB over here on the left, your modem and Ethernet ports here. Uh, headphone and a microphone there and then you have a PCM CIA card slot there is unfortunately nothing in there but it looks like that the little uh, mechanism on the side still works moving over to the back this is where you've got your uh, printer port you've got your power uh, port right there which I believe I have a uh, connector that will fit in there now there is a uh, user replaceable battery in this thing which is definitely very very nice I'm gonna have to actually kind of set this thing down to uh, get it out but you just kind of push this tab to the side and just push on the battery and on this battery right here you can kind of see more evidence of the whole branding thing that, that I was kind of talking about so you have the IBM logo over here and it says that is a registered trademark of you know IBM used under license and then this over here says it was manufactured for Lenovo for use with a ThinkPad. So this is again when IBM had basically sold their ThinkPad division to Lenovo, and uh, but still allowed them to you know produce them with the IBM name for a short amount of time. So we'll go ahead and flip it over to the right side here. And on the right side, you have your uh, VGA out, you know, for hooking this thing up to an, an external display and your CD-RW uh, drive right there. Definitely very, very nice. And that is the port selection. So I kind of showed you guys a little sneak peek at this laptop earlier in the video, but you've got your uh, display panel up here. You've got your uh, indicator lights here, your R50E branding right there. And you've got your keyboard, which like I said, is a QWERTY key keyboard, but it does have some of these extra symbols that you would not see uh, here in the United States, um, which is where I am based. So this laptop somehow found its way uh, basically from Singapore to the US uh, to a you know Goodwill, and I actually purchased this thing. I did tear the tag off, so you can't really see it too well because this tag kind of like you know disintegrated into four different parts. But I purchased this for nine dollars and ninety nine cents, as you can maybe see there if I'm putting that together. So yeah, and this was from a Goodwill. So there you go. But I do want to also kind of highlight uh, that there is no trackpad. Some of you guys that use a uh, laptop, especially in the modern day, are used to having a trackpad down here. Well, this actually had the track point, which is this little guy in here, this little nub here. Um, now you do still have a, the uh, left and right mouse buttons, and this is the center button right here. Um, so the idea is you kind of rest your hand like this, and your uh, finger here is going to actually control the uh, mouse pointer. So yes, there is no trackpad. So what I'm gonna do now is actually 
hope to see if I have the uh, proper uh, you know, laptop connector for this thing, and we're going to be attempting to power this thing up and see what is on it. So let me go ahead and kind of turn the laptop around so we can see the uh, thing there, and here is what we got to work with. These things can be kind of tricky to get out of here. I think number four is, okay, number four is gonna work, perfect. All right, so the battery indicator light is on, so that is definitely a good sign. We are going to uh, rotate this thing like this, open it up, and I'm going to adjust the camera uh, so you guys can get a little better view of this thing. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and press the power button here, and it looks like this thing's actually turning on. Check that out. IBM ThinkPad, Intel Celeron inside. We're gonna press the Access IBM button to interrupt normal startup. All right, so it's yelling at us to check the date and time settings. It thinks it's 2006. Oh, never mind. It thinks the system date is January 1st, 1988. So we're. I don't know why it said, oh, that was probably the bio state. That's what that is. Yeah, that's the bio state, not the current date. So it thinks that the date is before the actual date of the bio. So that's probably why it's uh, yelling at us. So it is January 18th, 2020. So these are the actual specifications of the system. So it's got an a Intel Celeron M 1.4 gigahertz with 512 megs of RAM. Uh, so if you were wondering what the specifications are, as I'm sure some of you guys were, there you go. We're going to uh, exit out of the BIOS. And uh, we're going to just boot right off the hard drive and see what operating system is on here. I'm, I would probably bet that it's Windows XP because that's it's very, very likely that that's what it's going to be. If there's anything on here, the thing might be totally wiped, uh, which is actually not really the case for uh, laptops and other computers that I get from Goodwill. So usually there's always a bunch of you know data on it because the people don't actually wipe it. If you've watched any of my uh, thrift store finds videos, you guys know the crazy amounts of people's data that they just leave on these computers. I always wipe them, you know, because it's just the right thing to do. So it asks you to, or if you want to boot into the IBM rescue environment, and there we go. What I tell you, Windows XP, in all of its glory. So here it is. Uh, I would also bet this is the professional uh, version of XP since it's on an IBM ThinkPad. Uh, but I might be wrong, we will see. Now our next bet is going to be if this thing is password protected or not, if the user put a password on it. Uh, let's see if let's see if they did. And check that out, it is not in English and there's also no password on the account because it's just logging in right now. So uh, definitely uh, pretty awesome, or maybe not because there's no password, but still pretty awesome that we can, that we're able to actually get into it without having to bypass the password. And I was actually wrong about the variant. This is Windows XP Home Edition. Oh, there's also no Windows key on this computer. That's kind of funny. Um, so yeah, it might actually just, oh yeah, yeah, it's, it, it's still loading up here. So you can kind of see like, it's actually not, if you've never used a uh, track point before, it's actually not that hard to get used to. I, I have used them before. It's just been a while and it's definitely still, uh, you know, pretty, pretty nice. But if you are used to a, uh, you know, trackpad, it could be uh, a little bit of a learning curve for you. So the entire system appears to be in Chinese, which is kind of what I was wondering about. I, I had figured this thing would be in a uh, different language, so it is in Chinese. Uh, so this right here is actually telling us about unused icons on the desktop. We'll go ahead and close out of that. And it looks like the Windows Live Messenger has come up. Let's actually go to about here and see. So this is uh, 14, Messenger Build 14 from 2009. Obviously, Windows Live Messenger is not uh, available to use anymore because the servers are, are down unless you use a third-party service like escargot uh, which if you guys are kind of interested in a little history on windows live messenger or just windows messenger in general you can check out that card up there that will take you to my retrospective video just kind of a little plug there looks like we had a, an, a vast antivirus pop-up down there um so yeah, definitely pretty cool. Um, we can go and see kind of what's on here. We've got a ton of IBM related things. We've got Access IBM, IBM Record Now, Java Web Start. Uh, there's also PC Doctor for Windows. Um, so yeah, some some software here. Oh, looks like we got WinRAR, uh, Nero. It's been a while since I've seen Nero. Wow, Adobe Reader 7.0. Windows Mobile resources. This person might have had a uh, Windows Mobile device. Um, we've got Logitech, which I guess is empty. Windows Live Call and Messenger, Avast. I, I, I wonder what version of Avast this is. This is all right. So this is the language uh, chooser. So we're going to switch that back to English, so we can actually, uh, or so I, I can actually understand what it's saying. So we're going to hit that. There we go. So now we're actually. Um, 
you know, we can see everything in English here. So this is version 7.0. The uh, program did expire. I mean, even though this is the like free version, uh, they would do the whole thing where it's like only valid for a year and then you have to like re-sign in. So we can hit show details here and yeah, so you have to re-register. And so yeah, I mean, according to this, I mean, we can safely assume that this thing was used um, up until and maybe even after December 2014, which considering that this thing came out in like around 2005, that is, I mean, this thing has had a long life. It has definitely uh, seen some use. And I definitely have to say, like, this thing is in really good shape considering how old that it is. I mean, this thing, like I said, came out in around 2005. Uh, so in the mid-2000s, so that is, you know, 15 years ago. Uh, and, you know, it's it's still in, in very decent shape. The only real signs of wear are on the keyboard, and you guys are probably able to kind of see that. Obviously, the keyboard um, and the, you know, track point in this case is going to be where most of the usage signs are going to be because it's the most used area of the entire machine, but it's still in very decent shape. Um, there are, like I said, definitely some signs of use on here, but the thing still works. There's no, like, broken keys. or This thing, I, I will say, I did clean it up a little bit. There was a lot of gunk kind of um, underneath the keys, so I kind of, you know, took some compressed air and kind of, you know, sprayed it out. There was a lot of dust in here. Uh, the screen um, definitely is in very good shape. The hinge, though, eh, you can kind of see there is definitely some signs of wear there, although it still is actually able to keep the thing propped up, which is good. Uh, let's go ahead and actually right-click on the computer here and go down to properties and kind of, you know, view some more information about this. Uh, so there is somebody's name there, so I'm going to have to blur that out, but this is running Service Pack 3. Um, and yeah, so it's an, once again, if you didn't see before, it's an Intel Celeron M 1.4 gigahertz, and Windows here is saying 504 megabytes of RAM, as opposed to 512, as it says in the BIOS. Uh, so there you have it. One last thing that we're going to take a look at is documents. That's something that I always usually take a look at to see what people left on here. Uh, the documents folder actually looks to have been wiped clean. Let's go into my pictures here, and there's nothing. Oh, we're hang on, we're loading. Um. Yeah, there's there's no uh, there, there's no pictures in here. All right, so after going through um, kind of the entire hard drive very briefly, uh, there actually does not appear to be really any personal documents on this computer, which is very very good. Uh, the My Documents folder and all of the folders in here, which is my pictures, my music, and my videos, have all been wiped. There's nothing in here at all. Um, so I don't know if this person just never kept any documents on the you know computer or the the more likely scenario is they just deleted everything but why they wouldn't just format the hard drive maybe they couldn't i don't know but either way we still have a lot of programs on here but there's not really any data uh, aside from the guy's full name that's really the only thing uh that you know you can get if you had gotten this computer i'm still going to be wiping this uh and kind of reinstalling uh, Windows XP Home Edition on here. I do have a Windows XP product key for this. Um, but yeah, as for just being in Chinese, there's really not uh, many other differences kind of with this version of Windows. It's basically just your standard copy of Windows XP Home Edition, but in Chinese. If I can show you guys uh, Winver here, uh, there you go. So it's the same build 2600, obviously. Uh, SP3 Service Pack 3, copyright 2007. So there you have it, guys. That is a very brief look at the IBM ThinkPad R50e from Singapore, our second kind of foreign uh, Windows-related item that we've taken a look at on this channel so far this year. Uh, if you guys enjoyed this video and if you want to see more like it, definitely be sure to give this video a thumbs up. Be sure to get subscribed down below and turn on those channel notifications if you haven't already to get notified whenever that I upload a new video, which I do every single week on this channel. And as always, if you guys have any comments or any questions or even video suggestions for me, be sure to leave those down below as those always help and I always enjoy reading what you guys have to say. And as always, I just want to thank you all so much for watching and for your continued support here on the channel, and I will see you all in the next video.